It's getting so close. Blue Origin's recent actions with their first orbital class rocket, New Glenn, signal that a launch is imminent. Finally, the rocket company, established over two and a half decades ago, is ready to bring its ace to the space race. They've even declared ambitions to achieve what no one, not even SpaceX, has done before. So, what do they aim to achieve on that flight? What have they done to accomplish this? And can they beat SpaceX? when SpaceX has already performed a spectacular booster catch in Starship Flight 5. Let's find out everything in today's episode. After years of anticipation and overcoming numerous obstacles, the ambitious New Glenn project is finally showing significant progress. On October 31st, Blue Origin delivered some exciting news to the tech world by revealing that the first stage of New Glenn, complete with its full cluster of BE-4 engines, has been completed and on its way to launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. In the coming days, we'll witness the highly anticipated hot fire test, a crucial check where all engines will ignite simultaneously for a few seconds. Just over a month ago, Blue Origin also completed a 15-second engine test of New Glenn's second stage. The dual BE-3U engines, fueled by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, each generating 173,000 pounds of thrust, performed stably, and met all expected technical specifications. With these achievements, Blue Origin's ace card is nearly ready, and now, what we are eagerly awaiting is New Glenn's maiden flight. New Glenn will become the fourth heavy lift commercial rocket to enter the market, following ULA's Vulcan and SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and Starship. This milestone not only highlights the explosive growth of America's private space industry, but also signals a new era where private companies, not governments, are steering the space race. And it's an absolutely massive step forward for Blue Origin. Well, there's something very interesting that you might not have noticed. Recently, Blue Origin has made some intriguing moves after a long period of silence about the New Glenn project. The company has started revealing more details about its pride and joy, primarily focusing on the rocket's first stage. That's right, because Blue Origin's ambitions go far beyond just getting New Glenn, their first orbital rocket, into space. They plan to recover this massive first stage on a specialized barge named Jacklin on its very first flight. We're calling New Glenn's first booster, so you're telling me there's a chance. Why? No one has landed a reusable booster on the first try. Yet, we're going for it, shared Dave Limp, CEO of Blue Origin, on X. When he said no one, they were positioning themselves as challengers, even to SpaceX, the current king of the launch industry. Well, if I'm not mistaken, every space program in history, whether it's a national program like those of the USA, the Soviet Union, Japan, India, or China, or commercial programs like SpaceX, has encountered at least one catastrophic failure in the process of transitioning from the first successful suborbital vehicle to the first successful orbital vehicle capable of carrying multiple tons of cargo into orbit. Such an aggressive move, isn't it? Now let's take a look at the numbers and configuration of New Glenn's first stage. It's a large and complex machine with four aerodynamic control fins, solid metal fins placed along the rocket's body, and two aerodynamic strakes at the rear of the tanks. They are designed to enhance cross-range capability during descent, giving the booster better maneuverability on its way down. And then there are the BE-4 engines. The first stage is equipped with seven BE-4 engines. Each BE-4 engine is designed for reusability and can generate 550,000 pounds of thrust, about 2,450 kilonewtons, at sea level, with flexible throttling capability. This flexibility is especially critical during landing as the engines must precisely slow the booster for a safe and accurate touchdown. And then there's one of the most crucial parts for any rocket making a return trip the landing gear. New Glenn is equipped with six landing legs, designed to stay tucked neatly within the rocket's body throughout the flight and only deploy right before the booster touches down on the recovery barge out at sea. Once it's completed the job of pushing the second stage and payload into orbit, the first stage will begin its journey back to Earth. This process involves a series of maneuvers to reorient the booster, followed by a landing burn to slow down before executing a vertical landing on the barge. Blue Origin, has set an ambitious goal to reuse each new Glenn first stage up to 25 times, aiming to reduce the cost of access to space. Yeah, it's a pretty strong beast. But is new Glenn really going to outshine SpaceX this time around? Well, it's comparison time. First thing first, SpaceX successfully nailed their booster landing on their very first attempt. 
Whether Blue Origin can do the same is something that hasn't happened yet. And actually, Blue Origin's vision bears a lot of resemblance to SpaceX's. Both are driven by the ambition to democratize space through reduced launch costs. I'm certain New Glenn and Starship will take on many of the same initial missions, setting the stage for some real competition between these two heavy lifters. But here's the twist. Blue Origin doesn't like to play the trial and error game. They've shown this with the BE-4 engine, which performed flawlessly on its very first flight, and has continued to prove reliable on ULA's Vulcan rocket. Blue Origin's bringing this same mindset to New Glenn, a strategy that could be seen as a mix of arrogance and a big ego. However, this drive for perfection could become a stumbling block. To ensure success on the first try, New Glenn's hardware has been designed with extreme complexity, incorporating layers of redundancies to tackle any situation that might arise. While this sounds promising, it's led to a heavier, more complex system than might be necessary. The biggest distinction between New Glenn and Starship's landing approach lies in the landing gear. Obviously, if you're landing on a flat surface, you need landing legs. Honestly, New Glenn's gear design looks pretty sleek and high-tech. The six-leg setup promises great stability, but questions linger about its practical effectiveness. With a rocket body measuring seven meters in diameter, these legs might not spread wide enough to create a base stable enough for perfect landing, especially on a moving barge in a rolling sea. But one thing is certain, more legs mean more dry mass for the rocket, leading to higher fuel requirements, not only to get the rocket itself into space, but also to support the deceleration and landing process. This inevitably reduces the rocket's payload capacity. It's the rocket equation. It's just physics. And with those six landing legs, profitability may be taking a hit. Six legs might just be pushing the limits of diminishing returns. Those landing legs also need refurbishment after every launch. Blue Origin has to recover the booster, bring it back, inspect and service it before it can fly again. Their goal for New Glenn's turnaround time between flights is currently set at 16 days. SpaceX, on the other hand, knows a lot about landing legs, thanks to years of experience with the Falcon 9. To give you some rough numbers, in the Falcon 9's first stage mass of about 25,000 kilograms, the landing leg system alone accounts for around 2,000 kilograms, about 8% of the total weight. Not only that, these parts require thorough inspection and maintenance after every flight, creating a significant operational time and cost burden. To address this with the Starship system, SpaceX decided to ditch the legs, at least for now. Their vision? Catch the booster right on the launch pad, perform a quick inspection with minimal maintenance, then slap on a new Starship, refuel, and fly again, all within just a few hours. They don't have half a month to spare per launch. In today's space industry, timing means everything, and no one understands that better than Elon Musk. SpaceX's approach to rocket development has shown that the fail-fast, learn-fast mindset sometimes trumps aiming for perfection from the start. Don't believe me? New Glenn itself is a bright example of what I'm saying. New Glenn can deliver 45 tons to low Earth orbit, LEO, and 13.6 tons geostationary transfer orbit, GTO, nearly double Falcon 9's capacity. Not only that, its reusability and turnaround time are impressive compared to Falcon 9. But here's the catch. Blue Origin took so long to create a rocket that could launch perfectly from the start that New Glenn is already outdated. By the time they crafted a reusable rocket powerful enough to challenge Falcon 9, SpaceX had already moved far ahead with Starship. We're talking about a launch system that can send over 100 tons to low Earth orbit, and with the upcoming V3 version, this number could surpass 200 tons. This is an unprecedented leap in the space industry, a capability no other rocket in history has achieved. New Glenn now finds itself in a tough spot. It's too big to fit into the medium lift market, but too small to compete with the super heavyweights. It's like it's stuck between SpaceX's two generations of rockets, Falcon 9 and Starship. This highlights the risk of slow development in an industry evolving at breakneck speed. Once Starship becomes fully operational, and I believe that'll be soon, it will truly revolutionize space access. Starship has the potential to replace every launch system on Earth. With full reusability, groundbreaking low launch costs, and unmatched power, Starship will, will redefine how we reach space. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.